กลับเข้าสู่ TMA Sustainability Forum 2020 Creating a Resilient City ในเซสชันของ The a s i a n of Change นะคะค่ะและสำหรับหัวข้อสุดท้ายของวันนี้เลยค่ะนอกจากการใช้โซเชียลมีเดียที่พูดไปเมื่อเซสชันที่ผ่านมาแล้วนะคะที่ช่วยขับเคลื่อนธุรกิจไปสู่ความยั่งยืนเนี่ยยังมีอีกหนึ่งหัวใจสำคัญค่ะซึ่งนั่นก็คือเรื่องของการใช้เทคโนโลยีและนวัตกรรมต่างๆค่ะเพื่อเชื่อมโยงในการพัฒนาสู่ความยั่งยืนค่ะรวมถึงการเปลี่ยนแปลงที่เกิดจากผลกระทบของการใช้เทคโนโลยีด้วยนะคะจะเป็นอย่างไรนั้นเนี่ยเรามารับฟังกันในหัวข้อนี้เลยค่ะค่ะแต่ก่อนอื่นนะคะถ้าใครมีคำถามถามสปีกเกอร์ของเรานะคะสามารถส่งมาได้ที่ช่อง Q&A ได้เลยค่ะค่ะขออนุญาตต้อนรับเป็นภาษาอังกฤษนะคะเพราะว่าเรามีสปีกเกอร์ต่างชาติกันอีกแล้วค่ะค่ะ We have now reached the final session under the topic the agent of change technology and innovation to enhance sustainability may invite Mr. s u w a t m i m u k Executive Vice President of Bangja Corporation Public Company Limited, Mr. s i n i v a s a n Ramabadran, the uh, Regional Director of Asia Pacific t u p o n g Sustainable uh, Solutions, and once again, please welcome our moderator, Ms. Gulawan s u p i s u n t h o n Sustainability and Climate Change Leader, Thailand of PwC Thailand. Please welcome. สวัสดีค่ะ Good afternoon again, นะคะ ladies and gentlemen. So warm welcome to the final panel session for today on the the agent of change. Uh, we are now with two speakers, นะคะ who will share uh, their experiences and their views, นะคะ under the topic of technology and innovation um, to enhance sustainability. So let's get start. We have 40 minutes and for discuss, and we have maybe 10 minutes to just answer the question from the audience. So the first question that I think everyone would like to know is that um, why why do we need to make technological innovation work for sustainable development? So, um, Kun Srini, Sri Srini, could you please answer the first question, Ka? Great. Firstly, I want to thank Thailand Management Association for having invited the guest o speak. It's my pleasure to be in this. <coughs> Let me start by there is some echo coming. Uh, we you hear me well. So uh, I want to start by sharing that given the current state where we are with respect to education and. For that, in the expected growth, right, probably 2050, the world population is from seven to nine billion. And obviously, because of that, the demand for demand for products and services are going to multiply in a significant way, and it's also to improve standards of living. There is a prediction that there will probably be only 50 billion electronic devices. Almost uh, that will be the kind of demand that's going to be greater because obviously more and more electronic and digital is becoming a part of life. All of this is clearly going to increase the strain on the environment, not only in terms of disposal but also in terms of generate production. Which means there is going to be a huge impact on the greenhouse gases and as a as a consequence on the climate change as well. So this is from the environmental perspective. If you look at it from a company perspective, uh, if you look at the S N P index, the average lifespan of the S N P 500 in 1980 was around 25 years. Currently, it's about 16 years. And by 2027, it is expected to be around 12 years. That means the number of companies in the S&P 500, the average lifespan is also reducing, and there is, seems to be a link between the companies that are performing well and their commitments to ESG and also commitments to contribution to climate change. So, obviously, there is a demand and the need for companies. At the board level, at the strategy level, to start looking at all three components, which is people, planet, and profit. If we don't do that, pretty soon the companies are probably going to become, you know, not in the top 500, but also probably not existent anymore, right? So, with that, 
kind of a background, the need for companies to start looking at GHG emissions and contributions to the environmental impact across the value chain. Why that is important is because if you start looking at it across the value chain, you can obviously look at which part of your value chain has the maximum impact, whether it's in terms of climate emissions or in terms of environmental impact or pollution, and you can prioritize. So for the same amount of money, you can have a much better impact by optimizing your focus. It's not across the board, same focus. Energy efficiency may be a requirement in one site, may not be a requirement in another site. So it is about prioritizing what can companies do in order to make it sustainable for the company as well as for the environment. So examples, for example, you know, it's not only looking at my products, but who are my customers? Who are my customers' customers? You know, so I might be in the business of making polymers. You know, my customer is not an end user. It might be another business. But my customer sells to another business. It could be an automobile, it could be a packaging company, you know, so different users. So unless we understand the needs of the end customer and start looking at the value chain and look at what is it that we as a company can do to impact the end customer, that's when technology and innovation kind of contributes to ensure sustainable development and also come up with innovations that will meet the needs of the customer. Over to you, Kunkulaj. So thank you for your um, view. So Kun Suwatka, could you please share your view why we really need uh, technological innovation for sustainable development? All right. So sorry, I think I, I had a difficulty to hear uh, the, the voice a little bit. But uh, everyone here can hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So the uh, reason that we need technology because this, the world is not going to be the same. We're going to have many, many, many problems and we have many, many, many needs. The first one, I think he, he's already said that, you know, uh, the population will gonna gonna increase, you know, two times in the next, you know, 10, 20 years, right? So we need more press, which is we don't have the land, we don't have the new world, we have another world for us. We need to use what we have right now for for you know for what we doing, right? So that is is number one. And when people So the, uh, we need a more innovation way to to do on that on that part, especially for for my part, which is the energy, and another part is also we looking for the new way to do in the food and in uh, food and also the health of because of you know COVID come when when COVID come. People have the you know impact almost everyone. So how do we deal with that? So we have to have the innovation like that. You know, Bangja, we have one part of the ethanol that we use for the fuel. You when the COVID come, we change that. We we you know we use the more agility to change our product to use that as the gel for to clean the hands, to clean the place, to clean the, you know, whatever we, we need to do to. Hmm. That we need to move from one to another, but we need to do using that innovation. So especially for the green energy, which is another part of uh, our company of the Bamcha, that we are uh, focusing more and more and more on this and we believe that the future of energy or energy transition is going to be on more green right and we we think that we need to do more on this like uh, you know solar energy we need to do more on the wind energy or the renewable or what we call the uh, green electron right 
solar, wind, geothermal, and what we do, another one is, is the, uh, the hydro, which is we have a lot in Laos and in Thailand. So we believe that uh, the, all the innovation need to come to, to increase that. And uh, we see that we're gonna have this in the near future. What our part of Bangja press to do, we press to do that the, the green energy and the green product that we're gonna have gonna be 50% of our revenue of our uh, portfolio in the next five years. So that's, we need a lot of the innovation to do on that part. Right now, uh, we have only uh, 30%. Mm -hmm. okay, ka. All right, so, back to the host. Ka. Thank you. Ka. So it means that to, we need innovation as a one, uh, as a one strategy under the corporate strategy so the both innovation should be considered a sustainability issue in every step of um, uh, developing innovation and i think the second question that's quite important and i think it's hard to achieve is that how mm -hmm. How how you achieve the uh, response to climate resilience uh, through this innovation that your um, companies or any um, institute institute try to develop and to just uh, reduce the uh, negative impact to the climate change and how how you achieve it? I would like to hear from your experience. Hun uh, Suwatka, could we start with Bang Jaka? Okay, all right. I give you one sample that you know we, we do that internally. We start with the uh, what we call the uh, startup internal startup or the, we call the program intrapreneur. So we have the uh, uh, employee think about what we can help, what we can do around uh, in Bangkok, right? So one one startup team that they, they go to the uh, uh, taxi, uh, not the taxi, the, the motorcycle taxi, what we call the wind, right? And we see that that's, uh, this wind, uh, they use the, uh, the normal motorcycle, the ice motorcycle, which is used there, uh, uh, parts of the, you know, our uh, product, which is the oil product, right, the gas product. But we see that, you know, it's uh, the uh, environmental is come and go right now and it's happened quite often, the PM 2.5 in Bangkok and in the major city in the world has happened at the same time. So this group of this startup and, you know, internal startup, they go and say that, okay, let's do this, uh, you know, project that uh, change the wind from the, uh, the Legra uh, motorcycle to EV, electrical motorcycle, right? So that one part, if, uh, if they could do that, that's going to change the whole landscape of the uh, wind motorcycle. So, so once they, they come with that, they say, okay, we can solve that if we can have the scale, scale of, you know, 10,000 motorcycle around uh, Bangkok. And we use that as the, uh, you know, the platform. Another, another way is we're going to use a battery because of the EV and, you know, use battery, right? So that is, you know, that's, that is also, you know, this love ourselves. We, we have to accept that we, we are based on oil. But now we, we try to disrupt to electrify that, to use that more and more on the EV. So if we can do that using that uh, startup, we can, we can change. Even if this lab ourselves, we can change that. So we have to press and, and start with, with, with small and then go start with uh, high in the future or scale up uh, more and more in the future. This is one of the uh, sample that we do uh, to this lab ourselves, to change from the oil to the uh, electric uh, vehicle. All right. Could you share more on your part, Ka? Right. Uh, firstly, I want to thank you for that question on, in terms of how. Let me start with some 
experience in uh, you know dupont sustainable solutions dss as a company was formed on the heritage of dupont right so we have the experience from dupont. and dupont has been in business for more than 2 plus years and we obviously done quite a fair bit of innovation but we also learned a lot of it. and some of the critical things that are important I would like to state before I state how is about ensuring that our scientists are focused on what matters it's not about each one has got their own technical capability their own forte of experience mm-hmm. and many times in the past we have had very good innovations which was done very well but obviously there was no users you know it was not the need in the marketplace so the big lesson that we learned was that any innovation has to be linked to business strategy is not about anybody can do any kind of innovation and you know it's just by luck something happens something mm. click something might not click that's not the way we can run a company so from a company's perspective there are a few questions that we need to address first what is our business strategy what are the focus areas what are the products what are the innovations that can help us drive in that product or growth areas in the next 3 to 5 years 5 to 10 years so that ambition aspiration of the company is quite critical based on the ambition and aspiration of the company we need to develop a business strategy and based on that business strategy then we define the innovation strategy so innovation strategy is not a stand alone created by a independent functional group of scientists who have great deep dive technical scientific knowledge and experience it doesn't that work that way it's got to be linked back to the business strategy and the innovation strategy itself is dependent on a few factors what are the market insights and foresights as i told you you know it's not about coming up with a beautiful product which no one uses it's about understanding the needs of the market understanding your customers customer needs understanding how that can have an impact on the environment how it can have an impact on people product and profit so that's where marketing insights vocs understanding the needs of our clients customers understanding the demands of the environment and then taking that into consideration combined with what are the core competencies that exist within our organization because if we have a certain core competency and we are trying to innovate in a totally different area it's not going to work out right so what are the core competencies what are the core technologies and whether the focus of our innovation is it restricted to products is it restricted to technologies what is it that we are driving if we are driving technology improvements or for operational improvements there is a certain amount of impact that it can have obviously every percentage of operational efficiency we improve it reduces the uh, uh, utilization of resources and thereby contributes to less environmental impact ultimately the goal of any innovation strategy is how to do more with less how to create more products how to create more high value added products how to create products which have less environmental impact so that we are able to contribute to people planet and profit and in order to uh, if we don't have the core competencies and technologies and one of the lessons that we have learned from dupont in the past is that we don't have to do all the innovation in house you know there are universities there are other companies so there is an open external network that is available how do we tap in and create a collaboratory of uh, innovation labs that can work together to achieve a pro- common goal because otherwise we are having independent agencies working on the same thing and obviously the impact on the environment is not any less so that is on about the open innovation the other part which is critical is about capable and motivated organization what kind of an organization do we have what is the innovative mindset that is required primarily because many times in many companies what we see we have a bunch of engineers and the bu- bunch of engineers i myself i'm an engineer so it's not that i'm 
playing down on engineers but engineers want to ensure that everything is clearly set and the chance of success is greater than 90% only then they want to take it forward innovation doesn't work that way there will be failures you know so if we don't have that mindset of accepting failures then we are not going to be able to innovate so what does that mean is we need to have an appropriate mindset a kind of risk mindset that will enable people to take innovation forward because if that risk mindset does not exist people are going to be very conservative they will not make choices and nothing uh, dramatic or no dramatic change will be visible if we put all of this together then it is about how do we manage our portfolio of technologies or portfolio of products and how do we prioritize so how do we prioritize again has to be focused on what is the chance of success what is the need for the market what is the impact on the environment what is the impact to the contribution margin many times we find that there are companies who create a huge number of high value added products but the contribution margin is declining or hmm. pro- profitability is very high but the impact on the environment is too too high as well you know so that's where portfolio of pro- technologies and portfolio of uh, products we need to look at the criteria that we use for screening and taking it forward so in a nutshell if i were to say how it starts with the business strategy business strategy to be linked to the innovation strategy and innovation strategy itself has to be linked to market back customer needs and then look internally in terms of competencies capabilities and mindsets to take this forward so for for both of your answers it's mean that first you need to understand your sales first that what is your competency what criteria that you want to 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 pursue and what best that we can do and then we need to understand also the audience or really the customer or who is our target group that we can use this to help them as well as help your environment help our environment as well if they are, can contribute to the reduce negative impact on environment so i think um it's quite challenging because to do this in understanding and balance um three pillars and to try i think it it there are keyword of transformation and change in the company when you want to create the innovation so could you both of you could you please tell um provide the case study or lesson learned that a short one in term of how you deal with this um change and how resistance in the company and at the end we get the innovation hmm. so kun si siri could you please start first go ahead kun suwat na ah, okay ka <laughs> okay actually i i, I think i do the, the opposite already i just give the huh. one sample but i would like to do one more sample mm-hmm. you know the uh in during the course the covid so during the lockdown mm-hmm. uh march april and may that time in bangkok right so we we think that that's a good time for the whole company because it's a lockdown we, we cannot do anything much mm-hmm. we we uh we push that you know all the employee have to do something new mm-hmm. right and then we come up with the new uh project called TGIF so I think thank uh it's not thank god it's friday it <laughs> think grace it friday okay. so so everyone have they can do whatever they they want to do mm. this is this is come from the ceo from the top and then buy in from management and then buy in from the all employees right so the whole the whole organization uh come up together and then start with the what we can do to help the company to 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 just do the whatever the you know small innovation or do something fun and innovate together mm-hmm. so we we come up with three uh, theme criteria one theme is uh do whatever we can to get more revenue right so so that part is you know we we come up very very fast uh change uh from the ethanol to be the uh the alcohol gel mm-hmm. you know alcohol gel to clean to clean the hands to to sell and to do that that 
because we have the ethanol already part of the our uh, green energy, right? So that the, the the employee said that okay, let's we can do this and put the gasoline together and put that and then become the uh, the uh, alcohol gel for clean hands. And then how to sell that? We start with the everyone can promote and sell to you know whatever network that they have the, the uh, or the social or the uh, you know e-commerce that they can push into. That's that part of the employee initiate and doing that. Then we get the, we get some part of that from the revenue, and then you know. Uh, the, another part is they want to do by reduce, uh, clear some project that they, they can change the process internally. Even if it's not part of the overall, you know, the sustainability. But for us, it's more important because they can change, they can reduce that time, right? Because they do the, the whole, uh, you know, change the process process redesign that what we call so they have more time to do more innovation in other way so that is the second way the third way is let's do the new project innovation together so they come up with the kind of like an internal startup like i said that uh internal startup by we want to do lot of lot of things in the uh in the energy and we can do more and more on the uh just the idea to do on the clean energy to help the uh, current business. So from that, we have about five uh, group together that can build and can start with the uh, initiate, become the new uh, startup, internal startup. So like I say that, you know, if it's come from the top, we don't have to buy in, you know, everyone come together and then they, during the COVID is the best time because everyone have the time to do this. And then they know that the company have the problem, the world have the problem. Mm -hmm. They have, uh, they enjoy to start doing something together. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's one of the, the, you know, the thing that I want to share that, you know, we, we have fun and then we do the internal startup and we call that a TGIF. Okay, ka. Nice, ka. So, Sirika. Thank you. So if I were to start on what needs to be done, uh, basically ultimate impact, ultimate intent of innovation is contributing to sustainable development while not compromising on the bottom line of the company. In order to do that, this means we have to make choices as a business. And as business, when we have to make choices, there are three critical factors that we have to consider. One is what is the level of risk? Is the risk low, moderate, or high? What is the time required for that innovation? Is it short term, medium term, or long term? What is the size of the reward? What is the size of the price? Is it going to be a small incremental change? Is it going to be substantive change? or is it going to be transformational change? So we cannot put all our eggs when we are making choices on innovation on any one particular basket. That means we cannot put a basket of all our uh, innovation dollar into the short term gains, or it could not be into the medium term, or it could not be in just the long term. It has to be a, a distribution because some will work for the shorter term, some will work for the medium term, and some will work for the longer term. So when we make these choices, what we have to look at is our familiarity with the technologies and markets versus whether we are venturing into new markets and new technologies. As we went to venture into new markets and new technologies, it becomes transformational, risk becomes high, time required is more. When it is familiarity with the markets and familiarity with the technologies, then the reduced risk, reduced time, but ob obviously the return on investment is also low. So with that being the case, what is required for us is to start looking external. One of the biggest requirements, what we have to do 
is be external oriented that means be focused on the customers import ideas from customer organization understand and anticipate customer needs acquire information about customer uh, data and business decisions that our competitors are making so that is one area that we have to do second is to look at what are the risks you know how can we uh, address those risks through creative and initiative taking and encouraging new ways of looking at things and the third is about accelerating so be externally oriented taking risks and accelerating so that there is a clear direction there is a clear strategy there is clarity on roles there is clarity in decision rights who will make the decision and sharing the learnings you know so typically for example if i have to uh, take some specific examples you know uh, uh, dupont is a company is in polymers so one of the things that they do is work with the customers customer means for example we are making polymers which could make some products which go into an automobile so rather than working with just our end customer we look at our customers customer for example me as a user of the car what do i want i want my car to be fuel efficient if i want my car to be fuel efficient the car manufacturers have to look at how do i improve the efficiency of the car now every kg of weight that i reduce on the car is going to help me to reduce the fuel efficiency so the car manufacturers are going to look at their suppliers to say what is it that they can do while not compromising on the safety of the car or safety of the vehicle how can they contribute to reduction of weight and with that being the need how can polymers be playing a role in making that kind of a product which is robust enough but light enough to meet the demands of the car manufacturer to meet the demands of the end customer similarly for packaging you know so packaging as much as we can reduce the weight of packaging there is a less impact there is less cost to the customer there is less impact on the environment less disposal of plastic waste and less impact on the environment so when we look at innovation we have to look at what are the choices that we have to make how do we make those choices what are the factors that needs to be considered for making those choices how do we continue to sustain as a business so that we are able to have impact on people planet and profit thank you okay ka okay ka so we have a uh, five minute for this discussion so i would like to to have your view in term of in your experience in driving technological innovation to solving um, the climate change or any um, other sustainable issue so what is very key success factors to really put a uh, start a uh, thing of innovation and then put it in place and to contribute the impact at the end what is your key success factor in driving this just short one maybe <laughs> this one this question so kun so what so sorry i can hear uh, the question very well Uh, Can you repeat that again? Uh, maybe my uh, my computer. Okay, <laughs> okay. Okay. The question is, what is your um, key success factors to drive the technological innovation into action? Okay. Did you hear me? Okay. Key success factors to drive innovation. It's a short period. It's a short period. Sorry. Okay. 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 the down to that question okay i think that one of the most critical key success factor for driving innovation is the mindset okay mindset of the leadership mindset of the organization as such if we don't have an innovative mindset a risk taking mindset there is no way we can encourage innovation in order to encourage innovation we need to have that mindset where we are welcoming ideas from our people from our clients and welcoming successes and equally 
appreciating failures right that is a very critical success factor because if an innovation project fails mm -hmm. and then we fire the employee or fire that team mm -hmm. then the message that we are giving to the entire organization is don't try anything new okay. if you fail you are gone right yeah. so one of the critical success factors is also to ensure that we accept failures mm -hmm. and successes but obviously we are in business mm -hmm. we cannot continue to keep accepting failure after failure mm -hmm. and in order to prevent repetitive failures mm -hmm. we need to have a structured management process which is a stage gated process mm -hmm. so that we are not putting all the money in before we know whether it is going to be successful or not so we have a stage gated process where every stage before we invest the next tranche of money mm -hmm. we have increased level of confidence not 100% confidence but at least the confidence level on the probability of success increases so if i were to articulate the three most critical success factors number 1 is innovative or risk taking mindset number 2 mm -hmm. appreciating and recognition both successes and failures mm -hmm. number 3 is a structured methodology which drives focus on customers not internal orientation mm -hmm. it has to focus on customers needs okay ha Ah. All right, so so uh, I understand the question now. Thank you for the team who sent me the question uh, through the, the the chat. Okay, so we I I think we we have the same. So the uh, you know to drive the key success of innovation, we have to do many many things, right? The uh, the mindset is number one, as which is you know this is true, and then we have we have been doing this for quite a number of years. It, it's not it's not happened overnight. Mm -hmm. It's uh, have to uh, you know through from the top and then through from the middle management and through from the uh, from the bottom from the everyone as well. So we have been you know. training and showing you know the whole company about you know design thinking what we have to do and the growth mindset that uh, everyone have to do but one thing we do differently is we split the team mm -hmm. split the team to do innovation because we know that if we let the whole company do it's going to have the problem because the whole company uh You know, some parts have to operation already. Some parts have to do, you know, their own uh, term, their own way, right? So we split into the small team, which is my team. So three years ago, we created the Bangcha Initiative and Innovation Center, very small team, uh, around you know, more ten to twelve people at that time. And then we use this small team we call the center of the age. Mm. So let's let's this center start doing something new, and then explore all the experiments. Like uh, uh, you said that you know we have to do we have to uh, you know success or failure we call experiment. It's not going to be failure. It's 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 part of experiment, but it's going to be success. Sometime in the future, but if it's not work right now, it's okay. That's fine. But we work as a small group, mm -hmm. right? And then we we put that into three teams in the small group. We split into two teams. One team that we do uh, more on the scouting the world. We call the CVC Corporate Venture Capitals. So this team, we let them go to the uh, you know join the. Big part of the world at the Silicon Valley. We join plug and play. We join the uh, uh, University MIT Berkeley Stanford. Mm -hmm. So this team will have more and see what what the future, uh, what the startup in the world look like, mm -hmm. right? And then they come back. Mm -hmm. They go there for two months and then they come back to the. Uh, 
to, to the corporates and then say that, okay, we need to invest on that. We need to do this with this, this future of things, our, our company, the new S-curve is, you know, look like this. So they come up with the idea that's going to be the new future of the next uh, new S-curve. So that is one team we call the Scouting the World, or CVC, Corporate Venture Capital. The second team, which is same as everyone, is called R&D right, uh, research and development. And, you know, I agree that we have to start with the, uh, the customer, but, you know, what we tr I try to tell my team of R&D that you're not R&D, you are business R&D. Mm -hmm. So it's the same, same thing. So business R&D, you have to go to talk to the customer or future customer that what they need, what the future are, and what is going to be the next new uh, trend for this, you know, we, we focus on the green, right? So, uh, like an you know, alternative protein or uh, bio, uh, bioplastic. Mm -hmm. what, what the customer need from this and what they want to pay, how they want to use on this. Mm -hmm. And after that, what we see, like, you know, some sample is like an alternative protein. So, we come back and then, okay, in the future, in the next five years, alternative protein is going to be big, huge, and we need to start now. We know that, you know, people will uh, want to buy, want to eat uh, less meat. They want to uh, eat more uh, vegetable or alternative part of protein. And better than that, you know, if we have the problem with the part of the uh, animal, like, uh, you know, beef or chicken, like, you know, chicken uh, bird flu, right? We can produce alternative protein out of agriculture mm -hmm. product. And we, we, we see that, you know, future is synthetic bio. So we, we put the focus on that part of the technology innovation that hopefully will help the whole world using the agriculture and synthetic bio to create high value product. That is second team already. So we have CVC, we have the R&D. The third team, which is the, what we call the ecosystem, mm -hmm. working with university, we can, working with the, uh, the lab, uh, working with the startup, even the startup around Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. And also, try to bring best out of our employee, which is the internal startup we call entrepreneur. So we have the program inside, we have the program working with the uh, ecosystem mm -hmm. to bring up with the, uh, you know, new kind of the innovation, which is we cannot do alone by ourselves. These three teams mm -hmm. is very, very small. Mm -hmm. And as we call it center of the S. So, and then after that, we bring, we push, we show this to the whole company and then they start to follow that, okay, innovation can happen in this way, in that way. And, you know, the, the mindset of the growth mindset of this team, bring the whole mindset of the company all together. Okay, okay. so we have one question. One question, so to is is question in term of as um, many big companies like Bang Jack and Dupong are uh, uh, dealing with um, sustainability enhancements. Uh, how can you position yourself, or how to I think about the balance that you can you can remain or you can retain your competitive advantage. And I also can list the common goal in terms of um, climate mitigation, reduction of negative impact to the society, how you balance that you can still have the bottom line and still doing good for societies and environment. Okay. All right, so so I can I can start. Okay. This is this is a uh, core of Bangcha. Bangcha is uh, the company that you know start with the uh, you know green energy, green product, and innovation, right? 
almost every uh, part of the uh, company when we do when we start with one CSR or ten CSR. You know, normally when we announce this, we want people to join the join the CSR project. Only you know, couple of seconds that feel that that ready. So that's that's the best part of the uh, Bangja because the whole employee start with the people want to help, people want to do more with the environmental, people want to more to do more with the society. That is is become easy because it's Bangja uh, start the company thirty five years ago with the helping each other, helping other uh, outside the company. Mm -hmm. so, so, so that part is, is we don't have to balance because of the people doing, doing the, that great in the, uh, our company already. But the, uh, the, the top management also put focus on and tell the whole company that we do the double profit. Mm -hmm. uh, what we mean double profit means that one profit is go to the shareholder, but the second profit will be go to the society and environmental. So many, many part of our product, like uh, our internet uh, coffee, the cup itself, we start with the, we need to use the uh, biodegradable uh, cup or plastic, right? So we, we said that you know this cup is you know two times or three times higher than the the normal plastic. You know I think that Dupont can can tell that you know this is by what PLA. So this part is more expensive, but the our uh, strategy said that you know we can do the you know double profit. One part we we put back to the society and environmental. We sacrifice that part and then show that to the, uh, the, the society that we, Bangja, we start with this, all our cup from the uh, internet gonna be the biodegradable and the lid itself is gonna be the one that we don't need to use the straw so we can reduce the plastic more and more. So that part is inside all the DNA of Bangja. Okay, ka. thank you. Ka. From Dupong, ka. Yeah, I think if you look at uh, some of the information available in the public domain, very clearly, even during the COVID disruptions, mm -hmm. ESG funds have performed better in the S and P 500 index compared to some of the other some of the other companies, right? So, which means very clearly, there is uh, a need for us to continue to look at how do we balance between the bottom line as well as contribution to the uh, uh, climate change as well as the sustainable development. In our own experience, based on uh, many years of uh, experience from within DuPont, it pays uh, significantly to the bottom line of the company if we, turn, if we take that long-term focus, right? If we take that focus on protecting the environment, protecting the society around the social uh, and the governance around associated with that. Definitely the impact is very well felt. And, you know, as a company, DuPont has declared dividend almost every quarter from 1904. Mm -hmm. You know, so depend, so if, if uh, DuPont was not so focused on environment or safety or social you know, and if then then the, there would be a significant impact, and you know that would have had an impact on the bottom line, and that would have had an impact on the dividends that we pay to our shareholders as well. So very clearly, we have uh, evidence to show financially it pays if we consider the requirements of environment and social into the product development or the technology development upfront. Okay. Why? some companies feel this as cost. Primarily because they start considering environmental or social requirements as an afterthought. They start a project, 
and then somebody says hey, you've not done the environmental impact assessment and then they have to start and then they have to go back and revisit the project costing and all of that mm -hmm. and then the cost starts, starts to escalate mm -hmm. so our experience is the more you are able to look at holistic considerations of environmental social safety and all of that up front into the project planning process mm -hmm. then the cost are actually down mm -hmm. and actually the benefits are higher so that's a very clear indication that if we integrate these requirements into front end loading project planning processes mm -hmm. then the costs are not really that high and it actually contributes to the bottom line mm -hmm. the further you delay the further it becomes an afterthought after you start the project the higher the cost and that's why people try to subvert or prevent expenditure around these costs saying that oh this is not going to give me a return on investment mm -hmm. okay ka uh, thank you both speakers to have for providing us more um, uh, knowledge and insight in terms of how to manage um, business with innovation as well as um, contributing positive impact to the environment and society so thank you again and go to mc ka Thank you very much, Ms. Kulawan, and also Kun Suwat, and Mr. Ramabhadran as well. Thank you, Mr. Ramabhadran, 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 และการสัมมนาในวันนี้นะคะจะเกิดขึ้นไม่ได้เลยค่ะถ้าขาดการสนับสนุนจากหน่วยงานพัฒมิตรซึ่งมีรายนำดังต่อไปนี้นะคะ Strategic Partner คนสำคัญค่ะได้แก่ SCG สำนักงานส่งเสริมการจัดประชุมและอินทัศการองค์การมหาชนและบริษัทชัยเบฟเฟอร์จำกัดมหาชนค่ะค่ะนอกจากนี้นะคะต้องขอขอบพระคุณผู้สนับสนุนหลักในการจัดงานค่ะธนาคารกรุงเทพจำกัดมหาชนบริษัทเบทาโกรจำกัดมหาชนบริษัทเบอร์ลี่ยูเกอร์จำกัดมหาชนธนาคารกสิกรไทยจำกัดมหาชนบริษัทปตทจำกัดมหาชนธนาคารไทยพาณิชย์จำกัดมหาชนและบริษัทไทยโอยจำกัดมหาชนค่ะและในวันพรุ่งนี้นะคะเรายังมีงานอีกหนึ่งวันค่ะกับ TMA Sustainability Forum 2020 Creating a Resilient City ค่ะโดยในการสัมมนาวันพรุ่งนี้นะคะจะเป็นประเด็นที่ไปในทิศทางของ Transformation และ New Business Model ค่ะที่มาพร้อมกับวิทยากรอีกหลายท่านนะคะที่จะมาร่วมแชร์มุมมองแนวคิดแนวทางรวมถึงกลยุทธ์ต่างๆค่ะเพื่อสร้างความยั่งยืนที่น่าสนใจให้กับทุกท่านด้วยนะคะ,คะสำหรับวันนี้ค่ะเราทั้งสองคนนะคะขอลาไปก่อนค่ะและพบกันพันพรุ่งนี้ขอบคุณและสวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีค่ะ